Let's take a look at a really difficult reading comprehension question that comes from this passage about efficient market hypothesis. So the first thing that I notice about the passage is that it's pretty long and it's pretty technical. So there are four paragraphs, and whenever you're reading a really technical passage like this with a lot of sort of economic and business terms floating around, it's pretty confusing, really take a step back and think about the overall structure of the passage. Then when you get to the questions like this one, it'll be a lot easier to know which part of the passage you have to look at. So in our passage, the first paragraph is really an introduction, and it sets up these three different theories. We have the weak EMH, efficient market hypothesis, the semi-strong EMH, and the strong EMH. So three versions of a hypothesis, and then the next three paragraphs well, it's just one for each one. The second paragraph talks about the weak EMH, the, four, uh, the third paragraph talks about the semi-strong EMH, and the fourth and final paragraph talks about strong EMH. And going into my question, that's the overall structure that I have in my mind. So now let's go ahead and look at this question. It says, according to the passage, someone who believes in the weak efficient market hypothesis would agree with all of the following statements except. The first thing that I see is this big capitalized word, except, and that is so, so important. What we're really looking for here is someone who believes in the weak EMH theory will agree with four of these answer choices and will not agree with one of the answer choices. And it's that one answer choice, that exception answer choice that we're looking for, and that's gonna be our correct answer. So our strategy here is going to be to go through each answer choice one by one and try to match it to the passage and say, would someone who believes in weak EMH agree with this? If so, I'm going to eliminate it, and if not, that's going to be our answer. Now, that overall structure of the passage that we looked at at the beginning is going to be really, really helpful here. Because where did it talk about the weak EMH theory? Well, a little bit in the introductory paragraph, but mostly in the second paragraph. So for the purposes of this question, I can pretty much ignore the third and fourth paragraphs entirely. And that is so helpful to me. And now I can really focus in and answer this question. So let's go ahead and just start with answer choice A. One can only obtain higher returns by assuming more risk. Well, where did we read about assuming more risk? That was in the first paragraph. That was in the introductory paragraph. Now, assuming more risk um, in order to get higher returns is something that's basically assumed by all versions of the efficient market hypothesis. That's what it talked about in the beginning before we even split it up into these three different versions. So on some level, every single one of these theories has to assume that more risk is the only way to get to more returns. That's the whole point of the efficient market hypothesis. So someone who believes in weak EMH would also have to believe in this, and we're gonna eliminate answer choice A because it applies to all three. Answer choice B, knowledge of historical price data will not significantly enhance an investor's capacity to achieve excess returns consistently. Really important word in here, will not significantly enhance. So make sure you don't miss little words like that. So knowledge of historical price data. Well, the weak EMH theory says in the second paragraph that pricing data is based on present information and it's not based on historical information at all. That's exactly what answer choice B says, which means that someone who believes in weak EMH would agree with answer choice B. This is an accept question, so that means it's not our answer. Go ahead and eliminate answer choice B. Answer choice C. Historical price data does not contain information that would determine future price movements. This is very similar to answer choice B. Historical price data is in both of them. And what did we just say? Well, the weak EMH, people who believe in weak EMH, do not believe that historical price data affects anything, really. They say that it is only affected by present information and present price data. Exact same reason as we eliminated answer choice B, we're gonna eliminate answer choice C as well. Moving on to answer choice D, technical analysis is not a productive strategy for gaining excess returns consistently. 
Now, it did mention some kinds of technical analysis in the passage, but where did it mention that? It really talked about technical analysis when we talked about semi-strong EMH and strong EMH to some extent, not when we're talking about weak EMH. For the exact same reasons that we eliminated B and C, which were that people who believe in weak EMH think that it doesn't matter what happened in the past, it doesn't matter what's going to happen, you know, what's public information or what's private information. It says that only present price data is what's going to determine things. So technical analysis is really in the realm of semi-strong EMH, not weak EMH, which is what we're looking for. So someone who believes in weak EMH would not agree with this, uh, sorry, would agree with this statement because it says technical analysis is not a productive strategy. They would agree, which means it's not our answer, which means we can eliminate it. Now, let's hope that answer choice E is correct, because it's the only one we have left. Let's take a look at it. New market information concerning an important takeover would be immediately reflected in the current price of a share. All right, so now we're talking about new market information. And this example, an important takeover, was even given in the passage. But where did it talk about market information and takeovers? Well, in semi-strong EMH. This answer choice, answer choice E, is something that believers of semi-strong EMH would agree with. That's not what the question says. The question is asking about believers in weak EMH, which means that believers in weak EMH would not agree with this. So answer choice E is our correct answer. It's a hard passage. Hard question, but if you just pay attention to the overall structure, it really narrows down where you have to look to get your information to answer the question. Answer choice E is correct.